The most powerful AMD build we've ever done! And we did one a few weeks ago. And funny story about this one, it was only about an hour ago that this absolutely behemoth thing arrived at my door and I didn't actually have a case for this build. Fate is on my side today. I say that now, if this doesn't work, it's gonna be sad times. So this is the, what is it called actually? The Half 700 Evo! I remembered that, 100%. And as you can see from the ridiculous size, this is one of the largest cases I think I've ever had in this studio. It's sort of Corsair 1000D-esque. And interestingly, I think the half was the first PC case that I properly took notice of around about, what, 15 years, something like that ago? It's a case that's all about airflow, no compromises, put everything in. Oh, I've bloody done the desk again, haven't I? I'm ruining the drama. And as you can see, this thing is absolutely ginormous. We've had to move the camera back just to accommodate this, which probably doesn't sound that interesting, but it is, it's, it's a big deal. You can fit eight fans at the top, a 240 at the back, just, just fans everywhere, really. If I'm honest, it is a little bit intimidating. Have we got enough horsepower to put inside this? Find out after a short word from this video's sponsor. Corsair's K70 RGB Pro is the perfect keyboard for gamers wanting the true PC gaming experience. Featuring a luxurious aluminium frame, gorgeous RGB lighting and Cherry MX mechanical key switches, this is a keyboard that is guaranteed to level up your game. Get yours today with the link below. I honestly don't know where to start. I mean, the graphics card will come at the end. This is the most powerful thing that AMD have ever sold, the 6950 XT. And believe it or not, this has actually got a fair bit of praise because unlike the 3090 Ti that it competes with, this is a lot cheaper. 1200 quid or so, so it's not exactly a bargain. So yeah, I definitely think you're sensing the theme with this. This is not going to be an affordable PC. This is very much the ultimate last balls to the wall AM4 rig I think we do, because AM5 is of course coming very soon. Get subscribed by the way, so you don't miss all of the reviews and builds of those motherboards. There's going to be a lot of them. Now, I don't want to sound like too much of a diva here, but like full disclosure, they've sent this to me and it's a used case, <gasps> which doesn't matter. It just means that some of the bits are not quite as they would have been out of the box. So if you don't like that, take it up with Cool Master. Apparently I had a sample that was meant to be delivered here and it got stolen. Who steals a case? Like, I know this thing is 450 pounds at the moment. 450 pounds? But this is definitely the most unique case I've seen in a long time. So you can put all of your cooling down here at the bottom. You can have ridiculously thick radiators here at the top. This is very much designed for pretty much custom loops or at least something like we're doing today, which just has everything in it and you want it to be as big and as quiet as possible. It's gonna say as loud, but obviously you want the opposite. You've got this little mirror here and it's fully modular. So you can put this down there if you wanna see the underside of your graphics card. But a massive eight fans at the top or 16 if you wanna double stack. You're probably thinking how on earth are you gonna plug that many fans in? Well, they do give you a little controller up here actually at the top. We have two different boxes. This is an ARGB and then the USB control box as well for the front. If that falls over, I'm gonna be sad. You can get all of your system vitals displayed on the front, which is really clean. There'll be one person in the comments be like, no, I don't like that. I'm out of breath now. <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I have the energy to tell you about the motherboard? We'll give it a go. I'll take one for the team. This is ROG's Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. And this is one of the first X570 boards that didn't actually have a chipset fan, which means you can have a much quieter system. They sent this to me pre-release, which is why the packaging is, um, not very professional, but this is still one of the best looking motherboards I think you can buy to date. I mean, this is assuming you like the jet black design, it's not for everybody, but clearly in this chassis, it's gonna look incredible. But I mean, just look how small that looks here. This build is gonna be compensating, but compensating for what? You tell me. We have pretty much had all of the details now about AM5. If you haven't seen my video on this, you can find it in the top round corner of your screen. That will show you everything you need to know. We don't actually know too much about the next gen Ryzen CPUs though. We know they have around about 15% better IPC or instructions per clock. So my prediction would be about 10% more gaming performance, but that doesn't detract from this chip, which is a 16 core 5950X. It is pretty much the best Ryzen has to offer at the moment. And if you are gonna be playing at like high refresh rates, 1440p ultra wide or 4K or anything like that, you're not gonna see any extra performance in games anyway. Yes, at 1080p, you can compare CPUs and make one look significantly better than the other, but obviously that's not the way people actually play their games. It definitely is gonna be very interesting though, because the next gen Ryzen CPUs aren't gonna look anything like this really. They're going to be very similar to Intel, not only in terms of the way that they look, because they're gonna go away from this pin grid array formation and go for LGA, 
My money is definitely on Ryzen taking over and being the best performance choice. But don't forget that Intel have had their chips out for a while now. So I'm sure they come straight back and fight the good fights. There never is necessarily a best chip to buy. It depends all about price to performance at the time of checkout. Don't let anyone else tell you differently. Though I suppose this is very much the ultimate gaming PC ever. Words I've never said before. I've also got some new goodies here in the studio that are going to make this build complete. So we've got a one terabyte SSD. This is a Viper VP4300. Actually, this one is very interesting. I mean, even interesting sounds like a disservice to this. This one is genius because when you look in the box, you get one heatsink, two heatsink, and then finally the SSD itself. And if this sounds boring, you're wrong because of course the beauty with this is no matter what motherboard you have, you're going to be able to cool your SSD because a lot of people find it very frustrating when you have to like remove part of the design of the board just because you've got a big heatsink on it. The cool thing with this is you just use whatever you want, whatever's appropriate. Sorry, I've left my screwdriver downstairs. This is really unprofessional. I apologize. I don't even know where it is. All right, dog, how are you? I got it. This is a PCIe Gen 4 SSD. And I think all of the slots, or at least most of the slots in this motherboard are Gen 4, which is nice, but we do want to use the one that's linked to the CPU lanes rather than the chipset ones. Then we will insert it in, like so. Lower that on top, and it's in. And then, in terms of our lovely RGB memory, we've got some Viper Steel from Patriot. This is a 32 gigabyte kit of DDR4, because of course this does not support DDR5. But same thing again, if you wanted to go for a super high-end Intel board at the moment that does support DDR5, you're then gonna be paying a lot of money for DDR5 memory. So you're saving a lot of money by going for stuff like this. And as we tested a couple of weeks ago, the difference between DDR5 and 4 for gaming at the moment doesn't really make any difference. Once again, I know we're gonna get a couple of people in the comments going, why didn't you use 64 gigabytes? Why didn't you use 64 gigabytes? Obviously you can add that a little bit later, but if you are going to go for 32, I personally would always recommend you get two sticks because in terms of latency, it is actually a little bit faster, but then also you can upgrade it later to 64 without having to sell the ones that you've already got. Oh, where are the screws? Hang on a minute. Where, where's my bag of screws? There is no bag of screws. This is, why did you send me a used case? Oh. If only there was a place where we had some backup screws. Helpfully labeled. HMRC, if you are watching, look, my label maker is a business asset. Oh, to install the motherboard. Oh, you're gonna wanna turn it on its side. Again, very heavy. Grab your board and just gently lower it into place. Once you've done one, you can stand it up. Probably won't make it any easier, but it means you can see as they have so helpfully got cables pre-routed for us, we can plug in our front panel connections, things like USB, any loose fans and things like that. Oh my God, who built in this before me? What is this? What is this? Why were they charging up a PlayStation 3 controller? I mean, I know the joke is that this is probably for a cooler, but it's nice to think that they did have like a PS3 controller just dangling down. Who did, who actually did this though? That, that is poor. To be fair, this is probably how I would leave it actually, because I'm scum. As we already touched on, you've got these two controllers here to plug all of the fans in. So you need to plug RGB and you need to plug fan speed in. Oh look, they've even been helpfully bent for me. That's really nice. You do have loads of different cooling options in this. Obviously you could put a radiator at the bottom. This is more meant for custom loops really or just giving airflow to your graphics card. You can of course populate the fans at the front and put radiators there. I think the top is very clearly the way to go for most people because it's just a load of empty space. Otherwise it would look a bit weird if you don't use this. But you definitely could fit two full loops in this. This is definitely more what this is designed for. So one for your graphics card or graphics cards and then one of course for your CPU. Show me some pictures if you are gonna create one of these for the way, I would love to see it. Oh, but for now, we're gonna go for a good old 360 all-in-one unit from, you guessed it, Cooler Master. It almost feels a little bit like cheating, doesn't it? This case does deserve like one of those proper show custom loops, but if you're building this yourself, I would still argue more people are gonna use a cooler like this than do a DIY system. I was so disappointed on the official marketing, by the way. One of the slogans says, have fun. Why would you not write half fun? Come on. I am looking forward to seeing this turned on though. I do think it is gonna look the business. Something about a bit more of a show build is always something that is a little bit more special. I believe the radiator mount should sort of fly out almost. There's a couple of screws. Aha. There you go. Never has a 360 radiator seemed so small. 
This could go horribly wrong. Boom. Okay, that was actually quite easy. Not bad. We can add ourselves a little X of thermal paste. I say X, I always do like a divide sign. Because it looks cool. And because it's very effective, obviously. Then we can get our cooler. It is still a tiny bit too tight. This is where custom loop would be a lot more appropriate, but it just slips on the top. Secure this by hand. And then if you want to do yourself a little sexy peel, boom. Installing that genuinely took so long, I need to perk myself up a little bit by talking about the graphics card. And normally we'd sort of save this to the end, but we're not gonna have any clearance restrictions with getting any of these ports in, so it doesn't really matter. And here's the thing, if you are buying a graphics card right now, then I don't actually envy you because it's gonna be such a difficult decision because if you need something that's got loads of horsepower, then clearly you're looking at a high-end card like this. It is gonna give you the performance that you need, and we'll be testing this in just a second, don't worry, to play the latest games at Sky High resolutions and refresh rates but obviously the problem is not only is this quite expensive now but come what three to six seven months there's probably going to be a replacement from this from AMD and almost certainly by Nvidia so what do you do do you wait do you risk not being able to buy a graphics card? Do you need something right now and you can't wait it is a bit of an impossible decision really only you know what's going to be right for you oh a panda has escaped from the zoo true story Twice. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to completely put you off. I'm just trying to make you aware of the current situation that we find ourselves in. I believe though that there is a magical box for me that doesn't take you to Narnia but does contain a vertical PCIe bracket. And here we have our little cable, Gen 4, and we do also have our bracket. You know what, I can name and shame. I'm pretty sure it says on the box like a return sender. I can find out who has left this case in a right mess. It's come from Cooler Master directly, that's awkward. Maybe don't put that in. So let's remove the PCIe slots that are in there already. We'll grab our riser cable and just gently rest this on the mount. You're gonna have to find some screws because they haven't given me any. And I'm not bitter about it at all. You then have your completed package that you can then slot in. Which you then line up with the slots and then Tallestly click into place. The question is then whether this slots in without any issue. I hope it will. That is only an expensive graphics card, it's fine. There we go, we're in. We're in. Yeah, that's all right actually, isn't it? I think we might get a bit of sag, but obviously that's why you screw it down. Oh no, my long screwdriver has finally met its match. Oh no, look, look at that, still good, still good. Power supply wise, we're using one from Be Quiet. This is a big expensive but very efficient titanium rated power supply this is the dark power 12. i love this thing but it annoys me every time that you don't get any proper like custom cables with it you get more of this like wiry stuff the good news is of course that you can go to someone like cable mod or be quiet actually sell them separately if you want some cables that look nicer but obviously that's adding extra expense to your already very expensive computer let's see how easy it is to install the power supply i have a feeling it will just sort of drop into place because you've got ventilation on the side. I think it just sits like that. Not much more to it, really. There's actually screws, look. Okay, that's a good system. That really was very easy. And you can still get to all of these cables at the back as well if you want to upgrade. So I will give Cooler Master that. That is very well thought out. Okay, so our lovely braided cable. Plug them in. I love that this is a power supply you can overclock. Like, have you ever wanted to overclock a power supply? If the answer is yes, this is the one for you. Nice little trick is to always start plugging in your cables from the bottom, and then you can sort of stack them on top of each other. So we've got two SATA, one for this little Cooler Master box, and then one for this fan hub at the back. This is a little bit janky, I don't really like it, but then if you didn't use it, they were too short and they stop here. So the box seemed like the lesser evil of the two. Oh, we got there. <laughs> We got there. I moved all the cables around because they looked a bit silly. There we go. This is pretty much our completed system. I do hope it works. I'm not a massive fan of the way that this cooler sits upon the top, to be honest. I think even for a 360, this case is just too big. So you're gonna wanna look at something potentially larger or at least thicker, just so it properly fills the space. Like the mirror sort of helps here, but there's still a lot of empty space in this case. But obviously once you turn it on, it should look pretty special. Oh dear. Let's see if this thing works. High-end PC, high-end GN950 gaming monitor. 
Thanks to LG for providing this for benchmarking. We've got a display on the screen, which is a promising sign. Power button is here. Oh. Oh. Oh, this needs turning, okay. That's a lot of RGB. <laughs> it's really nice to see the graphics card as well, actually in a vertical orientation to see it properly. And we've got a signal. That is a result. That is a result. Oh my God, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Stop the music, stop the music. I am outraged. Right, right, where's my phone? I am outraged at this. It bloody set. <laughs> It bloody says on the front of the case who our culprit is that left us with missing parts, bits all over the place. Geek of f***ing what? I am absolutely livid. He's probably off on holiday again because he never does any work. Skiing in the Alps. If he doesn't pick up, I am leaving a message. So I leave him a voice note. Hi James, it's uh, Marcus, the person that you've just sent the half 700 to. And I just want to say a massive thank you for leaving it in such a great condition. All of the bits missing, all of the screws everywhere, some AM4 hardware lying around. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hopefully I'll see you never. If he replies, I'll let you know. Anyway, taking in the case properly, you can see that this is definitely a high-end bit of kit. No doubt about it. This is one of the best looking chassis I think I've ever seen. It's not going to be for everyone. It is a little bit RGB everywhere. But even the plastic elements still manage to look quite high brow actually. It really can accommodate so much hardware. I do think if you are looking to build a high-end system you should really consider this but obviously this is very much in the category of people that want to spend like any amount of money that they have to get the ultimate PC case. This isn't something I'd recommend to most people but if you're seriously considering it all the options are covered. I think James has even managed to scratch my mirror. We will enable DOCP which is basically just XMP. Make the RAM run fast. Enable above 4G decoding, and then resizable bar support. Enable that. Grab our USB drive that's got a copy of Windows on it. Save and exit, and then hope it still boots. But of course, it hasn't worked, so we're gonna have to reset the CMOS and try and overclock the RAM manually. I imagine I will be able to get it to work, but it might take a little bit of time. So let's just fast forward to the bit where I've got it working, and we can play some games. Okay then, here we are, all set up and ready to go. Oh no, I don't have a mouse mat. I'll have to use pure skills to actually get this to work properly. Once again, very odd. We seem to be getting a little bit of stutter. What is it with AMD graphics cards at the moment and Fortnite? It's really very strange. Is this the overlay? Is it because we're recording? It is an absolutely bizarre issue. And we did see something similar happen with the 6650 build that I did not that long ago. So I can only assume it's some sort of weird conflict with maybe the driver, the frame view overlay or recording or all of them at the same time. But it only seems to happen in Fortnite. Very strange. Right, this guy's annoying me now. Can we pop him? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. I know it's going to be hard, but let's put aside the stutter for one second and just assume that your PC won't do this. You're going to get around about 80 frames a second or so. This is at 4K absolute max settings. So it's OK. I mean, if you're using this on an NVIDIA card, then you'd set DLSS to balanced probably or something and you get a much higher frame rate. But obviously, this is going to be the absolute best image quality possible. It's a shame that this game doesn't support FSR. I imagine it will eventually. But this is something that you do need to bear in mind if you go for an AMD graphics card. You're not going to get the benefits of that little bit more mature DLSS ecosystem. If you're more of a 1440p gamer, then you're going to want to pay a little bit closer attention to these numbers because now we're getting closer to 130, 140 FPS. And it does appear that the stutter has actually seemed to have pretty much gone. So I'm thinking it's like a shade issue in this particular area. Don't understand why, but it does seem to have at least vanished. Still though, it is less than the magical 144 hertz minimum that I'd love to see from the top end graphics card. So I definitely think if you're just exclusively a Fortnite player, then Nvidia is going to be the way to go here. I really want to stay and play Fortnite, but it's eight o'clock and I'm getting hungry. I've been marinating my meat for over 24 hours now. I just want my curry. We're gonna move on to some ray tracing now with some Resident Evil Village. But before we do so, Let's see what this system can really do as we put the side panel on. Say what you will about the individual components in this rig, I don't think anyone can argue that that is an absolutely gorgeous machine. Like, it's big, but it looks pretty damn sick. 
I have a feeling this is going to be quite hard to run. Whoa. Okay. I am surprised. I am very surprised. This is FSR set to ultra quality. Here we are running this at the max preset and then I've turned ray tracing on to the middle setting. And we're getting over 100 FPS. 100 FPS in a single player title with ray tracing enabled at 4K. This is definitely a dream title for the 6950, absolutely no doubt about this. This requires a lot of VRAM, I think we're using around about 13 gigabytes at the moment. So you wouldn't be able to run this on a 3080 with these exact settings, and obviously the 3090 is just going to be way too expensive. So it's pretty cool to see this graphics card properly stretch its legs. And the ray tracing is pretty cool in this as well. What's behind the curtain? Oh! <laughs> It's a man shooting at me. D don't apologize, you just shot me, mate. I'm not having that. In terms of noise levels and thermals, by the way, the game is still running and... Basically, no real noise at all. In terms of temperatures, about 76 on the GPU. If you added extra fans down the bottom and had this in probably a more normal orientation, then you could get it maybe slightly quieter, but this isn't loud whatsoever. I missed what happened there. He, d he doesn't look too happy. Neither, neither do they. But 60 degrees on the CPU. Not bad for a 16 core. Come get your black bin bags. We're not going to put that in the video, that's just for you, Carl. Let's move on to the game that I play the most at the moment, some F1 2021. I can show you some epic laps. To be fair, I am genuinely quite good at ads. Look, 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 we'll take the braking line. Look, we'll take it quite late. Look, we just about clip the corner there. And this is pretty much just under maximum settings, actually. This is with ray tracing set to medium, but I think everything else set to max at 4K with FSR enabled. And we're getting around about 100 frames a second or so. So this feels brilliant. I mean, it did until I lost my front wing. And we're in castle and it's all over. We've lost the wing. But this is actually the best place to crash because there's no red flags and everyone just sort of stands still and then gets disqualified for holding each other up. It is hilarious. So I think we're at the race, which means there's only one thing to do. Oh dear, that looked bad. Are you all right? <laughs> it looks really good in the replay though. But last and certainly not least, the one you've been waiting for, some Call of Duty Warzone. And here we go, dropping into Rebirth Island. Absolute max settings, ray tracing disabled, and you can see we're getting around about 120, 130 frames a second. And the thing for me is that this is without any form of FSR or DLSS. It just seems to work really rather well. You're getting a stupidly high frame rate. You're probably saturating the screen over HDMI or just under it if you're using it via DisplayPort. Oh dear. And all round, you're just getting an absolutely sure shot killer performance. Let's turn the resolution down a little bit to 1440p. And immediately you can tell it is a fair bit softer, but our frame rate has indeed increased. About 180 frames a second now. Oh! I died. All in all, I think I'm very pleased with what I've created, but there definitely is potential for a lot more here. I think it's a massive waste to not be populating all of the fan slots down the bottom. I'd definitely add a couple more. And actually having this one at the top, it doesn't really do anything. It looks perhaps a little bit odd up there. I'd probably go for a larger single fan at the rear and then spread them out equally. Obviously, if you do want a custom loop, this case is perfect for it. I do like the look of the cooler that we're using here, but the tubes are a bit meh. But once you put the side panel on the glass, it doesn't really matter. Vertical GPU mount is just perfect. I think the stumbling block is just going to be the price. This is not a case for everybody. This is a case for those that want to build the ultimate gaming PC or for those that just want to look at themselves in the mirror. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. What do you like? What do you dislike? What would you do differently? If you have enjoyed this video, then smash that like button. It really helps out. And of course, get subscribed for more just like this. And as always, if you do want to check out current pricing on anything that was featured in this build, you can find all of the parts listed down below my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're there, be sure to hit up Corsair's epic new keyboard, the K70 RGB Pro. With Axon hyper processing technology, you get 8000 Hz hyper polling, 4000 Hz key scanning, and a whopping 20 layers of RGB lighting. Grab yours today with the link below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.